welcome to this conversation about exponential functions and equations. So in this video, we're going to talk about what does the parent exponential function look like? And what are some of the key attributes of exponential functions in general? So to the right here, we have the graph of the function y is equal to 2 to the x. And this is a nice um, parent exponential function to look at. And it really could be any uh, b base value. It doesn't have to be 2, but 2 is a nice one to look at because we can actually see some of the coordinates. And we can work with some of the coordinates fairly easily. So let's go ahead and fill in the table below with some of the function values for y is equal to 2 raised to the x. Now, I'm going to start us off with the positive values because they're easier for most of you to fill in. So what is 2 to the first power? That's 2, and 2 squared is 4. 2 cubed is 8, and 2 to the fourth is 16. Now, most of you know that anything raised to the 0 power is 1, so 2 to the 0 power is 1. And then I wanted to remind you that negative exponents will be a fraction, right? 2 to the negative 1 is the same as 1 over 2 to the positive 1, so 1 half. And again, 2 to the negative 2 will be 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth. And so then 1 eighth and 1 16th, and these would continue to the left and to the right, right. Notice before we go any further that there's a little bit of symmetry here, right? 2 to the first is 2, while 2 to the negative first is 1 half. 2 to the fourth is 16, while 2 to the negative fourth is 1 over 16. So uh, that's something to just keep in mind. And so as we are looking at the graph, we are kind of considering what the behavior is of this function numerically. So if I'm looking at this graph, you can pretty easily tell that the x values go infinitely to the right and infinitely to the left, right? I could actually substitute in any x value extraordinarily large positively or extraordinarily large negatively. We could substitute in any kind of fractions, and really there's no restriction on the domain. So our domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. If I'm thinking about the range, we really kind of need to think about the behavior of this function. And so to do that, I want to hypothetically have you consider this. We know that these function values are fractions, right? 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth as we go to the left. What about 2 to the negative 100? What would that be? And if, if you could express that as a fraction, you could express it as 1 over 2 to the 100th power, right? And so notice that we have a denominator that's extremely, extremely large. But the whole fraction is still positive. If you think about a fraction with a small numerator but an extremely large denominator, then what we get is something that's positive, but the whole value is very, very small. And so if you think about moving to the left on this graph, we're going to get closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, but it's never actually going to reach the x-axis. It's always going to be positive, and as we move to the left, it's just going to be smaller and smaller and smaller. And so that allows us to identify the range as from 0 to infinity, but not include the endpoint of zero, because we're never actually going to reach zero. Now, there is a horizontal asymptote in any exponential function, all right? And so, so when we're thinking about the asymptote, we want to think about as we move extremely to the left or extremely to the right, where does this function kind of flatten out, right? 
And really the um, definition of a horizontal asymptote is as x is approaching either positive or negative infinity, what is y approaching? And if it approaches a specific value, that's the horizontal asymptote, okay? Now the behavior of the graph when we're looking at exponential functions is uh, kind of what value is this function flattening out to be really close to? And of course we know that to be uh, y equals zero, right? And so I've, I've graphed that line here and then we identify our horizontal asymptote as y equals zero. So if this is an asymptote and we've talked about the behavior of this function, what is the x-intercept of this function? And we would definitely say that there is no x-intercept. This graph never touches nor crosses the x-axis. How about the y-intercept though? You can definitely see that this graph actually crosses the y-axis at the value 1. So it is a y-intercept of 1. Now these last two statements are really for your information and they're not something that you might necessarily know. But if the base here is greater than 1, then the graph is going to be classified as strictly increasing. And what does that mean? That just means that the entire graph moving from left to right is increasing. There's never a, a place where you're going to see the graph go down, even for a split second. The entire graph, as you move from left to right, is increasing. But that changes if this base is between 0 and 1. If that base is a proper fraction, that graph will be strictly decreasing. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to talk about um, how do you graph specific exponential functions that have transformations applied.